Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure and function of the gas exchange system in insects. You should then be able to describe how insects reduce water loss from their gas exchange system. And finally, if you're following the OCR spec, you should be able to describe how some insects have evolved to increase the rate of gas exchange. In the last video we looked at what's meant by the surface area to volume ratio. We saw that unicellular organisms have a large surface area to volume ratio. This means that exchange of gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide can take place directly across the cell membrane. However, in larger organisms, the surface area to volume ratio falls sharply. And because of this, larger organisms require specialised gas exchange organs, such as the lungs in mammals. Lungs have a massive surface area, allowing very efficient gas exchange. Mammals also have blood, which collects oxygen in the lungs. The blood moves around the circulatory system, delivering the oxygen to cells for use in aerobic respiration. And we're going to be looking at the mammalian lungs and circulatory system in later videos. In this video we're looking at the gas exchange system in insects. Insects can be extremely active organisms, with a very high oxygen demand, for example during flight. The first key idea you need to understand is that in insects, the gas exchange system has evolved to provide oxygen directly to cells. Although insects do have a specialised transport system, this transfers nutrients, not oxygen. Insects are covered with a protective exoskeleton made of the polysaccharide chitin. Gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide cannot easily pass through the exoskeleton. So on the surface of the exoskeleton are small openings called spiracles. And I'm showing you spiracles here. Spiracles allow gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide to diffuse into the body of the insect. Spiracles lead into a network of tubes called tracheae. Tracheae are relatively wide tubes with a diameter of around 1mm. And tracheae extend down and along the insect's body. Now the walls of tracheae are reinforced with spirals of chitin and this chitin prevents the tracheae from collapsing, for example when an insect moves. Now extending from the tracheae are very fine tubes called tracheoles. Tracheoles have a diameter of around 1 micrometer or less, so in fact they're much narrower than I can show in this diagram. Each tracheole is a single cell that has extended to form a hollow tube and a huge number of tracheoles extend down in between the cells of the insect's body. Unlike tracheae, tracheoles are not supported by chitin. Now because tracheoles have such a narrow diameter and are extremely close to cells, there's a very short diffusion distance for gases moving between the cells and the tracheoles, and this allows oxygen to diffuse rapidly from the air in the tracheoles into the cells. The oxygen is needed for aerobic respiration which produces the gas carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide can also rapidly diffuse back into the air in the tracheoles. Now the huge number of tracheoles provides a very large surface area for gas exchange. And this allows insects to maintain a very rapid rate of aerobic respiration, for example during flight. Now you'll notice that the ends of the tracheoles are filled with fluid. This is called tracheal fluid. During intense activity, Cells around the tracheoles undergo anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration produces lactic acid, which lowers the water potential of the cells, and this causes water in the tracheal fluid to move into the cells. This reduces the volume of tracheal fluid, drawing air down into the tracheoles. It also means that more tracheal surface is available for the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now in many insects, gas exchange is essentially a passive process. Oxygen diffuses down its concentration gradient from the high concentration in the external air into the tracheoles where the concentration is lower. And carbon dioxide diffuses down its concentration gradient from the relatively high concentration in the tracheoles out to the external air. Remember that the rate of diffusion decreases with distance, so this means that insects tend to be small. The small size of insects reduces the distances required for diffusion to take place. Now insects face a significant problem, which is loss of water. The walls of the tracheoles are moist, and the ends of the tracheoles contain tracheal fluid. 
This means that water vapour can diffuse out of an insect via the spiracles. However, each spiracle is surrounded by a muscular sphincter, and this means that insects can reduce water loss by closing their spiracles like this, for example when the insect's oxygen requirement is relatively low. Now, if you're following the OCR spec, you should be able to describe how some insects have evolved to increase the rate of gas exchange. If we look at insects, we can see that they have three main body segments. These are the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Some insects can contract muscles to change the volume of the thorax and abdomen. This causes pressure changes in the tracheae and tracheoles, pushing air in and out. This bulk movement of air is called mass transport. In some insects, the tracheae contain expanded sections called air sacs. Changes in the volume of the thorax and abdomen can squeeze the air sacs, causing air to move from the air sacs into the tracheoles. Insects can also use the oxygen in the air sacs during times when spiracles have been closed for water conservation. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe gas exchange in insects. <laughs>